he passed me a large mag while I calibrate my scope. Here. Do you know if we're gonna have time to pick our shots up there or just a run and gun kind of thing? Wish I knew. Let's just mount the rails, top panel, pull the trigger. Copy. Can you need me to spot for you? I'm good. You just focus on hitting those marks as I track the lead. Copy. Checking with the boys. You guys ready to roll? Yeah. Let's shoot. Lock and lock. Are they handling camera gear here? Or firearms? I mean, by the way they look and talk, if we go down to the table, we can probably find camera gear. But just as likely, guns. Can you tell me for sure which one it is? The hint? It comes in these cases. In spite of my mom's best efforts, pop culture taught me guns are cool. I play first person shooters, I love action movies, I had toy guns when I was a kid. Sorry mom. And guns muzzle flashes were what actually got me into film. Hey what's up, Andrew Kramer here. As I wanted to make cool action videos, but my friends and I just didn't look the part without the visual effects. As a matter of fact, my minigun and rifle were actually a camera tripod and it made that tripod cool. Growing up in Brazil, my teenage infatuation with guns couldn't go further than detailed sketches and role-playing games. Real guns were illegal and out of reach, which is a different reality from America. So that energy went somewhere else for me. That's when I bought my first camera and decided to pursue a career in filmmaking. With my first solo project being an action movie teaser featuring a hard-earned pellet gun, and no respect for the 180 degree rule. At that time, I didn't see a connection from, wow, guns are cool, to, wow, cameras are cool. I failed to notice bringing the viewfinder to the eye is pretty much the same as lining up a shot with a gun. And being at the opposite end of the barrel is intimidating in both cases. There's a very real connection between guns and cameras. And I don't see how it's a positive connection. Before we get started on the history of this relationship, I want to encourage you to share your thoughts about my theories in the comments at any point during this video. Going further back than my teenage years, the movie camera's original shape was Etienne Jules Marais' chronophotographic gun from 1882, which was made to look and operate like a rifle, but aimed at studying the movement of animals. The chronophotographic gun had a drum filled not with bullets, but film, shooting a burst of 12 frames per second when the user squeezed the trigger. In the best internet fashion, this camera gun was used to capture the very first cat video ever in 1894. So instead of shooting the animal to put it on your wall, you shoot the animal to put it on your wall. Wait a second. As Susan Sontag puts it on her essay in Plato's Cave, to photograph is to appropriate the thing photographed. It means putting oneself in a certain relation to the world that feels like knowledge, and therefore like power. And this type of dynamic is present with both guns and cameras from their very start. The chronophotographic gun, what a mouthful, was inspired by a giant astrophotography camera called Jensen's Revolver, and that was inspired by Samuel Colt's revolver, an 1836 gun that inspired more than one camera and created a whole film genre, the Western. Westerns and gunslinger stereotypes inspired more cool camera gear, like hip holsters and a lens holder with the suggestive name of Quick Draw, which I also owned at one point. After more than a decade working in film, the language started to stick out, like the scene in the beginning of this episode. And it's not just the lingo. A lot of marketing towards camera gear employs a direct link with firearms. And I could argue America's politics in Hollywood are behind it. I don't mean this in a conspiracy theory way, but just as plain economics. The market for photographic equipment generated $84.8 billion worldwide in 2020. And it continues to expand. The US alone 
represents almost a third of that market. So as a company, both domestic and foreign, it would make sense to cater to American values to increase sales, right? It so happens that guns are a cornerstone of American culture. This is not a matter of opinion. And Hollywood uses cameras to export this mindset better than anyone through iconic films with cool characters doing cool things with cool guns. So you're here to save the world. So what do you need? Guns. Lots of guns. No one has ever done anything like this. That's why it's going to work. From a 1966 article on Time magazine, Americans have always been a gun-toting people. Guns enabled the first settlers to protect themselves. They made colonists a nation of riflemen capable of winning their freedom in the American Revolution. The West was tamed with guns. From the nation's earliest days, the gun has been the delight of collectors and sportsmen. Americans are really into guns, representing 60% of the worldwide firearms market. So America exports films with the idea that guns are super cool. There are over 550 million firearms in worldwide circulation. That's one firearm for every 12 people on the planet. The only question is, how do we arm the other 11? But the rest of the world isn't as open to gun ownership as the US. Don't worry, I have to go first, I'm American. Yet, we're all collectively kind of fascinated by the killing machines. So by offering a socially acceptable replacement, camera gear companies can swoop in and cater to those customers. This feeds into the feeling that photographers and cinematographers are nothing short of obsessed with gun-looking camera gear. The Photographer's article on the Doryu 216 pistol camera starts with, if you're not yet convinced that Japan is the stuff of photographers' dreams, that will soon change with what you're about to read. Matthew Stern recently made a video about the Soviet's photo sniper camera lens combination, and upon closer inspection, you might notice my comment, which emphasizes the risks of using such gear these days, is pinned right under that video. These are obvious examples, but the correlation runs deeper. It hints at using cameras as proxies for guns. We already looked at the market connections, and some camera companies have leaned hard into it, with the mentality of using our camera or our gear makes you as badass as brandishing a gun. A quick glance at Red's arsenal, I'm not joking, reveals names like Red Rocket or Red Weapon. They also have the Red Ranger body, and their refurbished program calls the cameras battle-tested. You can almost pick one of these as your loadout in Call of Duty. The market-leading camera support manufacturer, Tilta, uses the tagline, arm your camera. Everything is sleek, black, or gray, full of notches and grooves. And if we're looking close enough, it's hard to say if we're looking at a camera rig or a rifle. As a matter of fact, I've been using a Glock promo as B-roll here. Did you notice? Does Arm Your Camera explain the Armor Man, which has a bunch of padding and camo outfit, to be tactical? Elysium much? How about the image from the first page of the manual of the Nucleus wireless focusing system? Or the fact that camera rigging has adopted the firearm-originated NATO rail as a standard for accessories, and firearms have incorporated Arca Swiss tripod mounts. One sec, let me just get my UMP for this next section. Do you see it now? These camera gear companies want you to think their products look super cool. They usually do. And they want to cast a vibe of being badass, like Jason Momoa's review of the Red Komodo. I hunted down the frozen few to test Red's newest digital camera. This tribe of Harley men took me in as a brother. I was honored to be a part of this, and I am extremely honored to be a part of the Red family. Thank you for the opportunity. Go no further than the first comment to see what's up. Gun-oriented marketing instills the idea that by using this camera, you'll be more of a man. No more of a filmmaker. Check Momoa's IMDb for his director and cinematographer credits before taking his word that a certain camera It's like cinema in the palm of your hands. And what upsets me the most in Red's case is that they revolutionized the film industry towards digital 
in a way that no other manufacturer could before. To this day, RED's constantly innovating and providing us with cameras that over-deliver and undercharge, especially when compared to their industry competitors. This has given opportunity to lots of underprivileged storytellers to express their voices. Yet, it feels they're out of the target market because of the unnecessarily aggressive camera names and looks. This vibe isn't unique to the industry marketing though. We have had a bunch of dudes rolling in the dirt since 2011, pretending to be shooting each other at Battle at F-Stop Ridge. Camera Warfare from 2012 appears very similar to the FPS games of its time. They kind of looked cool when I was young, but now they just make me cringe. On the flip side, in the early 2010s, the city of Toronto pushed for a healthier idea through its Pixels for Pistols campaign. For almost two weeks, Toronto's citizens could turn in handguns in exchange for digital cameras. That's amazing. This brings us back to Sontag as she points out another scenario where people are switching from bullets to film. The photographic safari is replacing the gun safari in East Africa. The hunters have Hasselblads instead of Winchesters. Instead of looking through a telescopic sight to aim a rifle, they look through a viewfinder to frame a picture. Safaris highlight another historical and financial connection. These two industries evolved hand in hand according to Paul S. Landau's research, with technology from guns being incorporated into cameras and vice versa. Julian Burton Carvajal's article, The Camera as a Gun, analyzing South American cinema, starts with the metaphor of the movie camera as gun is as old as the apparatus itself. It's easy to point out Zeiss's connection to the Nazi regime, because that was all that was happening in Germany at that time. But many other camera companies grew thanks to their voluntary partnerships with the military, and to this day, have a vested interest in gun sales. As recently as 2013, Nikon was in the crosshairs of photographers for claiming to be a company at the heart of nature, while also producing scopes for rifles used to kill big animals. The irony was not lost, and as a result, scores of photographers abandoned the brand. Now, if you're considering a photographic safari, keep in mind you're feeding the same companies that supply folks that would rather take home kill trophies besides photos. Unfortunately, pixels for pistols and photo safaris are exceptions when it comes to taking the prestige away from guns. We get a lot more traction with camera reviews and tests that are centered around guns dangerously strengthening the connection. The vast majority of viewers, and even most reviewers, aren't aware of this bias. It was a lot of fun to shoot. But the time for ignorance is long past. I'm gonna shoot you. That is such a bad idea. I would consider this a proof of concept, but nowhere near something I or anyone else should ever use. It's literally a gun with a camera on it. On the topic of marketing, not all camera makers out there are aiming for the gun connection. Atten cameras, for example, were designed to sit like a cat on the shoulder. They sat this cat on his shoulder and he thought, that's the most comfortable thing. So he designed this as if it was his cat. I decided to try it with Finnegan, and it was surprisingly comfortable to have him on my shoulder. I'd love if my camera felt the same way. I want to work towards a culture in which we use cameras to share our voices instead of as tools for normalizing violence. Light comes into a camera to create things, beautiful things, meaningful, to add to our lives. Quite the opposite of a gun, which spits out bullets to conquer, to kill, to destroy. What is that you've got written on your helmet? Foreign to kill, sir. These days, I'm not a fan of guns anymore. Not in the real world. I'm trying to reduce my intake of entertainment centered around firearms, like action films and video games. It has not been easy, as the alternatives are limited and far from mainstream. Like being vegan at a steakhouse. But I'm sticking to my ideals and pushing through. Personal choices aside, the one thing we can get started with is what I did just in the last sentence. A change of words. Sticking to my ideals and not sticking to my guns. Cameras may have a stain in their past and present, but that doesn't mean we're incapable of changing what they stand for in the future. That wasn't bad. What else y'all got? Borrowing from Deidre Evans Pritchard's short article on the same subject, perhaps it's time for a new language that separates the process of capturing an image from that of taking a life. There are enough words out there for us to use already. For a start, 
Film is no longer just a noun, it's also a verb. So we can film a film, but that's not a great phrase. So what else is there? We also have the word capture used in image capturing, and we do take photographs and footage. We take them away and use them elsewhere. So let's go out and take in, engulf, gather in, assimilate, pull in, collect, ingest, realize, receive, immerse, consume, or take up a film today. If this feels too obviously from a thesaurus, perhaps we need some new lingo. Do at least that simple thing with me. Instead of run and gun, say docu-style. Let's say capture instead of shoot, or sure instead of scope. <laughs> All right, that was a bit pushy. Just call it anamorphic. Together, we can slowly climb this hill. This was not an easy video. If you liked it though, there's a link in the description to all my sources, plus a short article titled Guns May Kill But Cameras Bring Out Violence by Max Rotterdam that will push these ideas a bit further. If you're into this new format, get ready for more, as this episode is just laying the groundwork for expanding on underlying behaviors present in photography's culture, history, and values. A lot of them have to do with the gun camera connection and what guns represent, so this is where we started. Thank you so much for listening and watch as I move forward and work on better words for camera lingo and demilitarize my equipment. Chit for headings, out.